Okay, so now we're going to talk about what's called inverse variation. And pretend like you now live in Alaska and you sell uh, parkas, coats. And you live in Alaska. And you find that as the temperature goes down, so as it's getting colder, sales increase. Okay, so when the temperature is going down, but the sales are going up. That's an example of inverse variation. Okay, so we write this model as y equals k, there's always a k, over x, where x is the temperature, okay, so like in our example, oh, shoot, not y, um, parkas, I guess, sales, and let's do sales, now I have a big plot there, okay, sales, uh, K over the temperature. Okay, so our sales are going to increase as the temperature gets colder, as the, as the temperature goes down. Okay, and then everything else happens the same way. Now, when they're talking inverse variation, they can say varies inversely or is inversely proportional to. You'll see that inverse work. Okay, so I'm going to give you a little information about spray cans and how they work. This is in the textbook if you need to reference that, but you have a can, you know, and it has a little valve on it, and you push on the valve and spray comes out, you know, like a spray paint or something else, or deodorant used to be sold that way. Okay, so that's a spray can. Well, there's a volume, how much the can will hold, and then there's a gas inside, and it has to do with pressure. So as you push the valve, the pressure decreases, um, and then the gas expands, so because it has more room, and so the volume increases, okay? So they're talking about pressure and volume, okay? Anyway, and then the spray comes out of the can. It's all very exciting. Okay, and it's all science and physics. Okay, so here's our example. In general, if the temperature is constant, okay, because temperature does make a difference, but say the temperature is constant, the pressure P of a can of a gas in a container varies inversely as the volume V. Okay, so here comes the model. Pressure varies inversely, that's the equal part, K over V, because it varies inversely as the volume. Okay, pressure of a gas sample in a container whose volume, okay, so there's the V, that's 8 cubic inches, is 12 pounds per square inch. Okay, pounds per square inch, that is um, pounds PPI. I think is what they usually use. Like your tires, if you go and look how much, you know, um, pounds of uh, uh, air you're supposed to put in your tires on your car, it's going to be, um, they measured in pounds per inch. Okay. All right. I think that's PPI. This is pounds per square inch, but I don't know. It might be, maybe yes. It's pressure. So um, yeah, pounds per square inch. Okay. But I think they abbreviate it PPI. All right, so I got 8 for the volume and 12 for the pressure. So 12 equals K over 8. Okay, we can solve for K. We just have to multiply by 8. So multiply both sides by 8. This is kind of the math, the solving. So what is that? 96 equals K. All right, then we go up here, and now we can make our model into a formula. Uh, P equals 96 divided by the volume. Okay, then they're going to ask us a question. If the sample expands to a volume of 22 cubic inches, so they're telling me the volume, what is the new pressure? So I'm trying to figure out P. So I'm going to say 96 divided by 22 because that was the volume. And then I grab a calculator. Um, a lot of times these decimals will come out to be answers. Uh, these answers will come out to be decimal. And I get 4.36. So I'm going to say the pressure is about 4.36. Uh, you could put PPI or pounds. I'll just write out pounds per square inch. Um, don't let the word square bother you in this example. It's part of the units of measure, okay? So um, just so that you know. Okay, so there's that example.